Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on Digital Image Processing Simulator or DIPS which is a software that I have written to teach basic concepts of digital image analysis in an introductory remote sensing course. DIPS is completely free and you can download it using the link that has been provided in the description of this video and also on the DIPS page from where you are viewing this video. DIPS can be used by the instructor in the class to teach concepts, demonstrate concepts to students and it can also be used by students to revise these concepts out of the class. It is essentially therefore a teaching learning aid in understanding concepts of digital image analysis. The real motivation to create DIPS was the fact that there are many concepts in digital image analysis like filters which are extremely difficult to illustrate using a PowerPoint slide and when you actually try to show this particular concept on an image processing system the image processing system does not explain anything it just does the job so DIPS was created and positioned between a PowerPoint presentation and an image processing system to aid the instructor and also the student to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So what's the best way of using DIPS when teaching remote sensing image analysis? Well you can keep teaching remote sensing image analysis the way you are teaching but then you can show something that is difficult to show on a PowerPoint slide using DIPS and then carry on forward. So let me just very quickly show you how DIPS is organized and what are the various options that are available. One of the important things that students of digital image analysis need to understand or have problem understanding is the concept of color. So when different bands are assigned to different guns, um, it is uh, difficult for students to visualize how color is actually created on a screen. So this little tool here which is called as the RGB viewer, uh, students can actually um, assign bands to guns. So for example blue, green and red and then they can use these sliders to assign a value to the blue gun, a value to the green gun and a value to the red gun and then just simply press show. So this color that is being shown in this window is actually one pixel of what would actually be shown on the computer screen and using this uh, students can actually just keep experimenting and trying to understand how colors are actually recreated. They can also type these values right here. So for example if uh, uh, somebody wants to know how yellow color is created so they can just switch this off then they can have 255 of green and 255 of red and you have yellow and likewise uh, 255 in all three guns will have white zero in all the three guns is going to have black and so on and so forth so students can actually use this tool to understand color uh, on a remote sensing image in an interactive way. There is a small button here uh, that is called as resources. I'll explain this a little later on. But then one of these options is a color triangle and this gives some background onto uh, the color theory. Um, notice here at the bottom there are a couple of icons which are common to all the screens in DIPS one icon is uh, a quick concept summary when you click on it it tells you basically um, what this module is about and you get a quick concept summary of what this module is about next to this icon you have a few exercises when you click on this icon students can follow uh, some of these exercises and right next to that icon is a help icon on this particular module so when you click on it you get detailed information on what this module is supposed to be used for and how it can actually be used so all these three icons are common to every module in DIPS 
Next up is the pixel animator. This tool helps students visualize how a color composite can actually be created. So we can have band assignments to the red gun, green gun and the blue gun. This is a 3 by 3 sample image and when you press the create composite button notice that the value in the red band is actually going to the red gun the next band going to the green gun box and the blue value is coming to the blue gun box and you can just simply press OK and the next pixel is then picked up populated in different guns and then it is rendered on the screen so you can show how color composites are actually created and how each pixel is actually rendered based on a combination of what is uh, in in the red gun and what is in the green gun and what is in the blue gun so this display is without a linear contrast stretch but what can also be done is that this can be refreshed and then you can apply a linear contrast stretch and start creating a composite what dips does is that it also shows for each pixel how the contrast stretch is actually being performed uh, using a min-max uh, algorithm. So you can just keep pressing this OK button and this time around the pixels that are actually being rendered are much brighter than what they were before illustrating the idea of linear contrast stretching. Next up is the data reader. This module uh, basically illustrates to the student uh, how uh, a remote sensing image having multiple bands can be read as band sequential or band interleave by line or band interleave by pixel. So we have a 3 by 3 image um, um, in three bands. So there are 27 pixels in all. There is a small header at the start of the image file. Then uh, you have the 27 pixels and there is a small trailer at the end of the image file. So we will choose uh, read band sequential and do a slow read. So when when we are reading band sequential um, the first line of the image is reconstituted the first band. Uh, the second line of the first band is reconstituted and the third line of the first band is reconstituted. So one band is over then the next uh, band the first line um, line 2 of band 2 and line 3 of band 2 and then finally line 1 of band 3 line 2 of band 3 and then line 3 of band 3 so this is how uh, we have read uh, uh, in band sequential format um, we can refresh and this time read in band interleave by line format repeat this same exercise so this is line 1 of uh, uh, the first band but then because it is band interleaved it has to leave two lines because the next one is the um, the first line of band 2 followed by the first line of band 3 so the second line of uh, band 1 would actually be after 6 pixels so it will jump 6 pixels and then this is how it is reading the um, uh, the first band likewise the second band and the third band and in this way um, we can illustrate how band interleave by line actually works similarly for band interleave by pixel so using this um, uh, and uh, you can actually change the values of this file to something that you would like to um, uh, you know follow and there are some exercises here that um, will guide the student to understand these ideas better. So the next uh, module that I like to quickly show is the filter explorer and um, this module can actually be used to illustrate low pass and high pass filters. So we have an image. Notice that the um, uh, the outer boundary of this image is having one value and this is the part of the image on which we will operate. So we have currently chosen a low pass filter and uh, we will just run this filter so 
dips actually positions this filter and then you can show what is happening uh, the calculations are shown here and the values are changing on this side of the image so this is what happens when a low pass filter is run on this particular image once now what we can also show is we copy this image which is the result of running a low pass filter on the original image so these values are now transferred here and then we can run the filter one more time so this filter runs on this image one more time and so and the same one more time so as you keep running this filter you can clearly show to the students that a low pass filter uh, homogenizes the image you can show the direction of where these values are actually going likewise for a high pass filter um, uh, you can show um, how a high pass filter works and students can change these values using this change button these are some suggestions for filters that students can explore many other filters are available in textbooks so this is uh, a useful tool to illustrate how filters actually work on images the ratio builder tool helps a student visualize how um, uh, raster math can actually be performed very particularly useful for showing how NDVI image can images can actually be created so uh, you have one band and if this was the uh, the red band and this was the IR band you can just press the divide button and a image is created where every pixel here is um, um, has actually been created by dividing the appropriate pixel in band A by uh, the pixel in band B so as you do a mouse over it shows you the values and um, uh, if you click on this it will show you the exact math that has been performed and what is the value that has actually been achieved so this is an NDVI uh, equation that is being illustrated for pixel number one and you can see that these two pixels have been highlighted this is what has been performed and this is what the result is so this can be used to uh, show how NDVI images can actually be created uh, this is a tool for edge enhancement and edge enhancement is a concept that at times is difficult for students to understand particularly the ones that are doing remote sensing for the first time so here we have um, an image uh, which is having uh, two blocks of data uh, this block is having a value of 99 and this block is having a value of 69 and there is an edge right in between these two blocks as can be seen on this particular image so here we are running a Laplacian filter and to enhance the image and this is a non uh, directional filter so as we run this filter uh, the calculations are shown on this particular side and new values emerge and as we can see uh, the original values uh, in the edge area were 99 and 69 but this has been substantially changed as uh, uh, this filter is run on this particular image and hence the edge area to further illustrate the idea of non-directional edge enhancement we can press this button and we can now see that there are uh, you know a few edges and the data blocks are 99 69 69 99 and when we run the same filter on this image uh, all edges get enhanced edges in any directions get enhanced so this is how we can actually demonstrate edge enhancement um, we can also show to the students that if the entire image was having just one value running this filter will have no effect so it's a good tool to um, uh, teach edge enhancement uh, to students in the next part I'll talk about some of the other modules so thank you for watching this tutorial